Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to is it week four of our careers in public service um, meetings. My name is Beth Schill, and I am the senior manager for employer relations and industry advising at the Colley Career Undergraduate Center. And I help students who are interested in careers in government education nonprofit, uh, regardless of your, which school you're in. Um, I'm here to serve all undergraduates and thank you for joining us today. And hello, I am Tina Gaddy. I am the Assistant Director for Undergraduate Professional Development at the School of Foreign Service. Um, and so my role is somewhat similar to Beth's, but I only service SFS undergraduate students, um, mostly who are interested in careers in multinational organizations, uh, public service, pretty much everything, but just SFS students. And so um, Beth and I have been partnering on this series to bring you a lot of content based around public service um, careers and are really excited for this one today. I'm happy to see some of the students that have had um, some career coaching sessions with this week. I'm happy to see you all here. So yay, my threats have worked. And for those of you who are new, this is um, a great opportunity for you to ask a bunch of questions, even if you think they're just for you, they may benefit the greater group. And um, I'm gonna go on mute and Beth's gonna do most of the talking, but if you have questions, you can either use the raise hand function or put them in the chat. Yeah. All right, so if you bear with me for a moment, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And we really hope that today can be a little bit of a conversation. Um, you know, I'm gonna be presenting and I'll be not really presenting using the slide deck so much, but actually going through some websites as we talk about careers on the Hill and what does that mean? Um, but as we have, um, after you have questions, like Tina said, please feel free to interrupt. I think the more interactive this can be, especially with something as dynamic as like working on the Hill that's like literally changing month to month, um, the better conversations we can have, so. All right, so today's agenda, we're gonna to go, to go over at a very, very high level, what do we mean when we say working on the Hill? We're gonna review various types of roles in Congress that are of particular interest to students. It's not gonna be everything that you can do on the Hill, but the things that Tina and I see most often in our appointments. We're also gonna go over some of the lesser known Hill agencies like the Congressional Research Service, Library of Congress, Government um, Accountability Office, and kind of their role in helping the legislative branch fulfill their function. And then finally, we'll also touch on campaigns a little bit um, and go over, because uh, while we're not in a big campaign season right now, that's gonna change over the next six to nine months. So, all right. So all of this past few uh, weeks, if you've joined us at all, you know that we have discussed different branches of the government as well as state and local government. Uh, again, going back to civics, we're talking executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch. Today, we will be focusing on the legislative branch. All right, oops, sorry, hit the wrong arrow button. All right, so the Hill, what kinds of jobs does this entail? It means working for your representative, your senator, your congressperson. It can mean working on a committee, um, which you're still reporting to a member of Congress as part of a committee, but it's much more bipartisan and you're doing more work in the background. It also means working for a campaign. And there's different levels and seasons and opportunities available there. And then other legislative branch agencies. So how do you know who to work for? When we usually get students coming in and saying they wanna work on Congress, we immediately, well, the first thing I usually ask is where do you live? So to the audience, does anybody wanna volunteer? What is, you don't have to say your city, but what is your home zip code? Anybody want to volunteer? Um, my home zip code, I'm from Indiana and it's 46032. 46032? Okay, anybody um, else? I think I saw Thomas. Yes, uh, my home zip code is 66206. Okay, all right, so we'll start with that. So why am I asking like for your, your, zip, your zip code? Don't worry, I'm not gonna like go try and look you up. It's really easy. When you're first starting to look for a job in the House or the Senate, you go to house.gov or senate.gov. And right at the top, usually, at least for the Congress people, you can find your representative by looking up through your zip code. So taking our friend from Indiana, 46032, and look it up. 
And your representative in Congress is Victoria Sparts. So what you can do here is you can see, one, you can see like, okay, yeah, does this make sense? Do I see my hometown somewhere north of the Indianapolis area? And then what you can do is you can go directly to your congressperson's website. You can learn more about them. Here's like, you can see an automatic pop-up comes on like saying, hey, subscribe to my newsletter. Regardless of if you follow, if you align with your, your senator or your congressperson, I would recommend um, getting on their email listers because they often have really, really useful information um, that's helpful for you, you as a constituent. And um, that's usually pretty nonpartisan. So you can sign up, but you can also learn here about usually like right here, hey, look, there's this fancy button that talks about having an internship here. And the thing is, is when you're thinking about Congress, you really want to remember that there's 435 members of Congress. And while they are all part of the Hill, you really have to think about it as 435 small businesses because each office has its own unique culture. Each congressperson, each senator has their own way of doing things. Um, sometimes, too, it doesn't make sense. Like they may stand for certain things in the public media where you get a certain impression of what they're like as a boss, but then they're completely different actually working for them as a member of Congress. So when you're looking through, um, often some students are trying to ask like, well, how do I get an internship on the Hill? And that's where I say it varies. And that's why I say, okay, well, let's start with your representative. And I should probably back up just for a moment and say the reason why we ask you to go to your representative first is because typically they prefer to hire as interns and as full-time staff people from their home district and constituents and people who are familiar with it. Now, that being said, you don't necessarily have to be from that district. I've worked with students whose grandparents live in somebody's district or maybe they spent their summers in a district like going to different summer camps they're often just looking for that connection so that they know that you know what the issues are that are important for any given congressional district. So here, Congresswoman Sparts's uh, information, you can see she has a form right here that she fill out. Sometimes they have an email that they say email a cover letter and a resume to this, to a certain email, and it's kind of easy. All right, so I'm gonna go back to house.gov for a second. and give our other zip code a look. So we've got 66206, look up. All right, Sharice David. So we're looking outside Kansas City. Cool, oh, I'm glad you two both volunteered your zip codes because they're ones where it's people who maybe we aren't as familiar with. All right, so same thing here. You would click on Sharice David's webpage and find out more about her and what she is looking for doing. Or Sharice, is it? I might be mistaken in my use of pronouns there. I apologize. Um, so that's at a very, very high level where we start looking for careers in or internships. The Senate is similar, um, except here because I, and I think this is really the case because there's only two senators and most people typically know your senators. If you don't know your senator, you can really quickly look it up. Or they also have the finder senators and they just do it by state. So you don't have to worry about the home zip code lookup. So like I grew up in Michigan and I can click on Michigan and be like, okay. So Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters are the two senators from Michigan. And then similarly to your, your house rep, you can click on their websites. You can see what they're looking for, for internships and put together your applications. All right. So that's kind of at a very high level how you find jobs using um, the websites. And that's really where you go. I will say occasionally some folks will be on Handshake. Um, some of the, I'll say people who are more hip and with it and know what Handshake is, there are sometimes postings on Handshake. So keep an eye on Handshake. Um, but really going directly to their web pages is the best place. All right. Now, has anybody, just like if you can use the raise hand function, who is has heard of something called working in a committee? And you have questions about like, hey, I wanna go work on like the foreign affairs committee or something. Anybody interested in that? All right, 
Cool, I'll see a couple. All right, so Paul, what committee have you heard of or might you be interested in working for someday? Oh, well, yeah, the Foreign Affairs Committee, you already said. And then also, uh, I think it's still called the Transportation Committee. It okay. may, they change it every so often. Okay, and are you thinking House or Senate? Uh, no preference at this point. Okay, so here's the key with committees. Committees are really cool opportunities. They're also super, like, well, not super, but they're very bipartisan um, opportunities as well because the way committees are staffed is you have your, your majority and minority who kind of co-lead co the committee. And usually whichever party is in power in either the House or the Senate, you have slightly more people working in that party in a committee. So like right now, Democrats have both chambers. So you'll see a few more Democrat openings and maybe Republican openings, but you work together with people on the other side of the aisle to help you know, research and look at opportunities and put briefings together for the committee. So how you get hired into a committee, there's a couple different ways. One is you usually get hired through the majority or the minority person who is on the committee. And there's sometimes separate applications for committees themselves. And I'll use, we'll go look at the committees in a moment to kind of look at what might be the case for these committees we were just talking about. Um, or the other thing you can do and I've seen students be successful this way, is you can also look up to see whether it's your representative or just in general, who sits on committee. So I'm gonna go back to the website for, we're gonna go for the Senate. We'll shake things up a little bit. All right, so if you go both the House and the Senate on the homepage, they have usually a tab called committees. And so you can click on the committees and you can go directly to memberships and assignments. And then you can see here, you search by committee. All right, so we're looking at transportation. So here in the Senate, it's the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation. So I'm gonna click on that. Ah, thank you, Tina. All right, and so you can see here that there's 28 members on the committees. They have a website, which we'll check out in a minute. And then there's different subcommittees. And depending, much like other parts of the government, some committees have really, really well put together web pages and each of their subcommittees have web pages. Others, it depends. Like they sometimes just have this landing page where you can find information. So each is a little different. But here you can see who the chairman is for the majority, who the ranking member is for the minority. And then everybody who is on here are members of the committees. Now. Something to keep in mind is usually people who are listed higher in the committee rankings are a little bit more involved because if you're looking at this, it's, um, it's not alphabetical. They don't list the senators in alphabetical order. So usually the people who are listed closer to the top are more involved in the committee versus like the people at the very bottom who are either junior, like Raphael Warnock just you know started in the Senate. So he's going to be junior on a lot of the committees or maybe they're on it, but they're not as involved in that committee as some others. So it's like they're paying attention, but like any other job, senators and Congress people get tasked with being on committees that maybe they don't wanna be on and they might take it less seriously than some of the ones that they really feel passionate about. So what you could do is say you're interested in working on this committee, you can use this list to determine, depending on your affiliation, oh, okay, well, I can either apply through the chairman or the ranking member's office, or I can see, all right, Amy Klobuchar, Richard Blumenthal, John Thune, Roy Blunt, Ted Cruz, like these are people's offices that you could apply to through the office itself. And, you know, maybe you can get assigned some committee work as an intern. All right. So then if we're looking at how to get a job for this committee, we can go to the website. So commerce.senate.gov. Oh, this is a very nice website. Um, some of them are really are not, not, Tina's nodding her head. Oh, they have a video, a live hearing video and everything. That's cool. Um, so here you have the chair, the members, latest news, upcoming hearings. So there is perhaps one going on right now on data security, Democratic press, Republican press. These are all good things to read about so that you know kind of what their things are. 
And what I'm looking for here is sometimes down at the bottom or sometimes at the top, they may have something about careers or internships, but not always. So if you go under here, usually it's under the about section if they have it, where they might talk about um, like if they have an internship program. And when you don't see it, what does this mean? Well, here's the thing with committees is oftentimes you, the best way to find out about committee opportunities is by already being an intern with or having a job in the Senate or the House. And a lot of these jobs are passed by word of mouth. Sometimes they're advertised, but a lot of times it's word of mouth. And um, I think the thing to, to know about the Hill is unlike a lot of other organizations, the Hill can be, with some exceptions, very hierarchical. So you start as an intern to be able to get a staff assistant job. You work as a staff assistant job, giving tours, handling phone calls, answering emails. And if you do a good job of that, then you'll start to be working on stuff with the legislative aid. And as you kind of put in your time and put in the effort, you start to hear about different opportunities. So it's hard as a student who's never worked on the Hill or a campaign or anything to kind of go straight into committee. Usually these roles are for folks that have been on the Hill for a little while. And a little while can mean you volunteered for a campaign and you did an internship, um, but it can be a little bit harder to find out opportunities. So really quickly, Beth, I did yeah. something that I don't always recommend doing because it may not work out. When I went to this particular page, I went to FAQs and it didn't answer where we could find an internship application, but I deleted that part and put sort of backslash internships and got this. So I, was really, I know that doesn't always work. Like that? It. Like yeah. internships? Yep. Ah, oh, hey. And look, look at that. That's hiding. Because there was no link there. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a really good tip to you, Tina. So yeah, insider tip. Try fiddling with their website and see if you can find this. All right, so here they say um, they have information, college and graduate students. So this committee is, is open for internships um, and they have an internship application. And then here in the middle, they say it's from, they tell you kind of the relative dates. That's a really good tip, Tina, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like a lot of these things are really popular. So yeah, sometimes things are hidden and that's on purpose. And that's again, where like, you know, you've been around the block a little bit. You can sometimes figure some of these things out. So, okay, so that is this particular committee. Any other committees anybody else is interested in that you want me to try and see if we can sleuth out the information? Now's your chance. What about Veterans Affairs Committee? Okay, House or Senate? Senate. Senate, all right. So let's go back to Senate. Committees. Committee on Veterans Affairs. All right, let's go here. All right, so hearing on Veterans Affairs. Lawyer, I'm gonna try Tina's hack again. Oh, see, uh, nope, that one didn't work that time. All right, let's see. Veterans, you just kind of got to sometimes look around. One thing you could always do too, and I often do recommend this, especially with working on the Hill, is picking up the phone and calling them and contacting them. You can always do email, but they get a ton of email. And I've heard from folks who work on the Hill, if you really wanna get in touch with somebody on the Hill, it's easiest to call. You'll actually, like someone will pick up the phone. So like you can contact the chairman. Um, here they have information about whistleblowers, um, but you can also pick up the phone and call as well. Now, a couple other things I think that's important to know is when you're looking at, um, whether you're looking at a congressperson's website or the committee website, a mistake I often see students do is, um, you know, kind of just throw out, I'll say a blind application where whether it's for your representative or let's say you're a huge fan of AOC or you're a huge fan of Matt Getz, and I'm purposely picking two people who are diametrically opposed for this example. When you're, especially if you're going for someone whose name is well known, 
you have to do your research. So in addition to hearing about them on the news and listening to them on like Sunday morning talk shows, um, you want to go to their webpage. You want to look at the press releases they've had. You want to look at the issues that they're covering and really do your research. And same if you're interested on a committee, like what are the committee hearings coming up? What are they trying to uncover? Um, and because that information enables you in your cover letter to be really specific and say, hey, I don't want to just work for AOC because she's pretty awesome, but I care. I want to work for her because she specializes in X, Y, Z issues. These are issues that are important to me because of ABC reason. And I bring, you know, experience from class, experience from other opportunities. Um, and that's where I think I see a lot of students are able to differentiate themselves and have successful internship applications. Um, so that that is that. I'm going to bring up my... Um, the other thing to keep in mind when you're looking for your reps on, on Congress and you're looking at whether to do that or you're looking at um, whether or not to work on committees, the other thing to consider too is being paying attention to election cycles and knowing whether or not your rep or your, your senator is going to be up for re-election in the next election cycle. Because what often happens, and we'll talk a little bit more about this with the campaign section, is that when someone is up for election, sometimes there's movement within their offices. So they have some of their staffers who will go work on the campaign and they still need the work to get done in their offices. So sometimes there might be different opportunities available in the middle of a campaign cycle. And because of federal law, like someone cannot work in the office on the Hill and work at the campaign at the same time. They're two pretty separate staff, but they'll kind of borrow folks. Um, so whenever somebody is up for reelection, which, you know, next calendar year 2022 is all of the house <laughs> you know there could be some opportunities um especially for those races that are going to be more active you know some of the some congress people don't have to worry about primary challenges or anything and it's they don't have to worry about election day but for those whom their seats are hot seats or they're really being targeted by the other party that's where you might also see a little more opportunity for uh opportunities on the hill all right um i have a quick question yeah, sure. Um, so what happens if like we're on the website for a committee and a subcommittee and um, there's not like we don't really see a button for internships and then also a lot of the representatives that are in that committee, um, like they're not from the states that uh, we're a part of or that we've been to. So how do we kind of like go forward from there? That's the point where I was just speaking to where I would pick a few of the folks whose um, views on the issues that that committee covers are in line with yours and you would apply to their office um, that won't necessarily guarantee that you might get a committee placement but at the very least depending on the office and the culture you might have an opportunity to work on some issues that come before committees um, you could you i often tell students it's like oh i'm very interested in the senator's work on x committee doing y and you know, here is how I have experience doing that, or here's what I could bring to that. And it's really showing again that uh, what we refer to with other agencies is like a mission connection, except in this case, it's a mission connection very specific to a particular cause. Um, and, and I'll be honest, it, it can be harder. And the more well-known a person is, the higher up in the rankings they are. So like Pelosi, Schumer, um, uh, Mitch McConnell, like working for all those folks, it's hard to get in. Like, you, and this is where, and we'll we'll talk a little bit to this. Working on the Hill, you gotta get used to. You may not like it, but you gotta get used to networking. I mean, this business runs on rubbing elbows and who you know, as much as what you know. Now, if some of you are like. You know, you're just here on campus for the first time in two years and you've not been into DC and you're like, oh, what do I do? How do I start? We're actually going to get to get that. Um, so before we, um, before we get to that, um, I did want to see, answer one question and that is, I, oops, sorry, I lost my Zoom photo. Um, one question I do see sometimes with students is, um, okay, I'm a Democrat, but my representative is Republican or vice versa. 
can I still work for them? And what damage am I doing to my, my brand if I intend to stay in politics long-term? I will say, unless you are working for a very known, very opinionated member of Congress, usually it's okay to work for the person, even if they're of the opposite political party, because again, if they're your representative and you're representing your hometown, you're serving ultimately your con the constituents. And so there's that public service element. I've met a lot of students who've, who've worked for the opposite side. Again, with the caveat that, you know, you can get pigeonholed depending on who you work for. So, you know, you work for Ted Cruz or you work for Elizabeth Warren, you are making a political statement, even if they are your senators, you know? So you have to be aware of that. And that's where you can come talk to me. You can talk to Tina. You can talk to the folks at GU Politics. So let's say, let's say, yeah, you live in Texas and you work for Ted Cruz because he's your senator and you really want to work in the Senate and see what that's like. All right, cool. So then you're done with that. And then it's time for you to get a job. And you're like, oh, really? I want to work for a Democratic member of Congress. Well, that's where you could work with us and we can help you craft your cover letter to say, to say, you know. I work for Ted Cruz because, you know, I want to serve the people of Texas and here's what I learned or here's what I came from that or here are the skills that I developed. Like, you know, despite what you see on TV, the Hill is a lot friendlier behind the scenes and it's a lot more bipartisan. So some of these people that you just see going at each other in the news, like they really are friends on the, like when no one's looking. There was a, um, um, a show out a couple of years ago that was like, it was loosely based on fiction and it was about a group of senators who lived together in a row house on Capitol Hill. And it was actually based on real life. I think John Goodman was one of the main actors and I can't remember what it was called, but it was like, it was based on a bunch of people. I think Senator Schumer was one of them who lived in a row house together. And it was a bipart like Democrats and Republicans. And it like went over all the silly antics that went on when they were like living in the house together versus when they were at work. And, you know, whether you're, whether we're talking senators and Congress people or we're talking, you know, the staff, that's kind of the cool thing is like, it really is a bigger community. And I know when I've looked at the Hill for jobs at different points in my job search, I had probably more leads from people who were on the opposite side of the aisle who were willing to put me in touch with friends that they knew who served on different committees that, you know, during the day, they'd fight all day long about opposing issues, but they'd all go to happy hours on the hill at that same place at night. Again, maybe a few rare exceptions, but Alpha House, thank you, Tina. It's really funny if you just want like a stupid show to watch. It's a funny one. Um, and it's based on it's based on like a real life story. Um, and so I would just keep that in mind when you're looking. Um, you know, you can pigeonhole yourself. Um, or like sometimes too, if you're working for a certain member who's a certain party, and then you want to go work for a nonprofit that's again on the opposite side of an issue, it's not a no. It's never going to happen. It's more okay. You're going to have to explain the choices you made, and and that shows too. You know, sometimes our views evolve, and that happens often in the city. You know, people start out on one side on the issue, um, and change. Like when I was in college gay marriage was not a popular thing you know there were a few folks out there really pushing for it but even your your pretty like liberal democrats were dancing around it and you know that has changed dramatically on the hill we're now like most people it's the law okay great so let's let's look at like what other social issues we need to look at um ensuring equality for so you know, things change on the Hill and people recognize that, you know, as you move through your career things, you might change your mind on different social issues as well. All right, so any other questions on working on the Hill, working for, for committees, politics? I mean, politics really is the name of the game here. So, you know, Putting yourself out there, being okay with that is, is part of this. All right. So the next thing we're just gonna touch on briefly is uh, working for campaigns. Like I said, right now, it's pretty quiet. 
because we have an off season election. Um, you know, I think we've got a couple of gubernatorial campaigns, but otherwise it's pretty quiet. But after November 2nd, you want to start paying attention to the news because one, like I said, we have all members of Congress of the House up for re-election in 2022. So they're going to start jockeying. And as much as I'm not ready for this yet, you are starting to hear rumbles of presidential elections. Now, that really won't heat up until after the 2022 elections and we see what happens with the leadership of the House and the Senate. Um, but what you want to look out for now are who's forming PACs and super PACs, because that's usually a first step towards running towards bigger office. Paying attention to who's um, running for office or who's deciding to step down. You're seeing that right now. You're starting to hear some people who are saying, I'm not going to run again for any number of reasons. And you want to pay attention to that. And then as you start hearing people declaring their candidacies, it's often in those early stages where you want to jump in and volunteer. Um, sometimes campaigns at the beginning especially don't pay. And it's by, again, we talk about like, you got to put in your time, putting your time in as an unpaid volunteer sometimes will later on lead you. So let's say somebody that you like declares they're going to go for re-election in January. Next semester, see what you can do to volunteer for the campaign, even if it's just a couple hours a week, like, you know, texting, doing like text banks or phone banks. And then sometimes come summer, if you've done a good job, sometimes there could be more like, you know, a, a temporary thing that you could do over the summer to work for the campaign or something that would maybe run through the election itself. And I've seen a lot of students do that where it's like, I'm going to start out volunteering and then, hey, I do a good job and someone plucks me for a paid position. Um, so that's one thing to consider with campaigns. Um, and we're going to we're going to start see seeing more of that. Um, the other thing I would say, too, is whether we're talking someone who's currently in office or if you're paying attention to the news that's going on in your hometowns, volunteer for or campaign for someone who you really believe in. Don't necessarily go for the big guns, the people who are like, oh yeah, so-and-so is guaranteed to win because the last couple of major presidential elections have shown us anything. It's that the people that the pundits and everyone think are gonna win aren't. Um, when I was in college, I remember a lot of people wanted to, to work for John Edwards, uh, John Kerry, Senator Clinton, you know, these were the names and the, the big popular folks that people really were jockeying for. And I remember in a poli sci class, like after the summer semester, you know, a whole group of us were sitting there talking about like, oh, what'd you do over the summer? Who'd you work for? Blah, blah, blah. And this one guy was like, yeah, I interned for the junior, junior, uh, junior senator from Illinois. And we're all like, oh yeah, who's that? Oh yeah, his name's Barack Obama. And we're like, oh, okay, cool, next. And like, we turned to the person who was like, you know, volunteering, who's working for like Senator Kerry or Senator Clinton. And this guy was like, no, 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 this guy's like the real deal. He's super cool. He's so energetic. Like, I'm like totally on board. He's gonna be president someday. And we're all like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I'm not kidding. That person ended up becoming, um, one of Obama's main speech writers when he was elected president because he, his experience working for someone who he really believed in, he ended up volunteering for the campaign, ended up becoming part of the campaign, writing speeches for Obama on the campaign. And then when he was elected, ended up, he was like one of the youngest speech writers in like White House history and was there, I wanna say like the whole eight years. Um, and this was just like, you know, some kid I was sitting next to in my, you know, 500 person lecture hall. So, you know, these things happen all the time. And that's where I say, you know, you want to go and volunteer for someone on a campaign who you don't mind busting your butt for, for next to nothing or sometimes no pay. And at the end of which, if they lost, you're still going to be okay. You're going to be like, that's okay. I still believe in them. I still think that what they stand for is important. So, you know, I always, always say to students, yeah, go for the person who you really, truly admire, who you're willing to do that work for. Because campaigns, whether you're volunteering, you're interning, or you're working full-time, they are pretty grueling. So. Any, 
Uh, I don't remember Elizabeth, honestly. Like this is one of those you're asking who the person was it might have been but honestly like I would say he, this person really was an acquaintance in a class of mine to the point where I don't remember their name <laughs> but I remember reading about them in like alumni magazines later on um so all right so I'm getting a couple things in the chat so I just want to check that out oh the internship bulletins <laughs> um all right so but before I get to some of the resources that we have that can also help you out, any question, any other questions on working for campaigns? And we usually will do other sessions too, like when it's a heavy campaign season or like leading up to a presidential campaign, we'll, we often do different workshops between like us and geopolitics. Um, so there's a lot out there that we can talk to. All right, so Tina brought up a good thing that I'm gonna show you all. And that's um, some of the, yeah, some of the resources that we have, and or not that we have, but that are out there that you can use. All right. So she talked about there's a bunch of different places where I think it's good to pay attention. Um, I talk about insider resources that that I label wonky media. So these are all like all the websites that talk about what's going on on the hill, and some of it's really interesting stuff some of it's really dry um but if you're interested in like what it's like what's going on on the hill who's working with who who's you know taking swipes at who these media federal news network politico the hill foreign policy depending on like what your interest areas are, are all good areas these listservs um traverse jobs tom Mon monotos jobs and daybook jobs these are all websites, and, and we'll be sending the deck around afterwards. These are all websites that have um, often do listings for internships as well as full-time jobs. Um, sometimes, I, I believe it's Tom Monotos Jobs has a whole separate section just on internships. This includes the Hill and Congress people, but it also includes um, you know, a lot of uh, advocacy organizations that work to try and influence the Hill. Tina also mentioned there are some, and they're in the chat, there are some great um, listservs that you can sign up to be on. Um, let's see. One is the Senate Employment Internships, and the other is House, the House Employment Bulletin. I'm going to see if I can pull those up real quick. So Senate. Uh, uh, all right. Where did it go? Sorry. Oh, here it is over here. Sorry. All right. So the Senate is senate.gov. And you can just, you can also Google the employment bulletin. Um, they have a Twitter handle, Senate at Senate placement. Um, they don't send out an email listserv, but this website is updated. Usually they update it every week that the Senate is in session. So during recess, they don't update it, but every week that the Senate is in session. And you can see it was just updated this morning. Um, and you can see there's there's everything listed on here. Here's a press internship for Senator Gillibrand, paid spring interns for Senator Jackie Rosen. Um, they have clerkships a press internship for the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. So um, what again, link are you on? Oh, can you guys not see this? No. Not oh, really. I'm so sorry. Here, hang on. I think it's because it's in a different browser. Okay, can you see this now? Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry about that. So this is a senate.gov backslash employment, or you can Google Senate employment options and this page should pop up. And you can see a lot of it right now is looking for spring internships. And sometimes they're just the general member internships where you know you're working in the office, you're giving tours, you're answering the phones. But some of these you can see are more specific, like press or communications. I've seen some more in the area of like digital or social media areas, um, communications in turn. So you can see there's a lot right now that's popping up for internships. Um, and then the other website if you can just give me a moment, is you can subscribe to the House Employment Options website. And this is an email that will get sent to you um, every week, again, every week that it's in session. So you can just sign up with your email here and you'll get an email to your inbox. Um, you can also, they do also have it like online, but I like getting an email in my inbox, it's kind of cool. 
and you can look, they have a resume bank. One other office that I did want to point out to you all is the House Office on Diversity and Inclusion. So their website is diversity.house.gov. They were created um, under Speaker Pelosi, uh, I think four or five years ago. And their whole point is to try and help create, um, they've noticed like, okay, members of Congress are starting to become more diverse. We've still got a long way to go. You know, this Congress has more females in it than any other Congress. Um, but when you actually look down to like the staff level, chiefs of staff, interns, legislative aides, whatever, that is still not very diverse. So the House Office of Diversity and Inclusion has been charged with working in a bipartisan manner to try and make sure that the halls of Congress look as diverse as the American people. The cool thing is, is they have a bank. So like you can um, look on here for internship opportunities or office vacancies, and they have a resume bank that you can go to. Um, they also, we're going to be doing an event on November 2nd with them where they're going to talk more about what it's like to be a person of a diverse background working, in, working on the Hill. Um, and they also have like different resources and um, workshops that they do. But I would say definitely click here. I mean, it's open to everybody. Um, so they have a lot of really good resources here um, for different folks, if you're currently staff, if you're looking at learning more, um, but that's, that's another office that I would also highlight for you all. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Tina, for sending this week's bulletins. All right. The, um, so that's kind of working. Um, where you can find this information. The one last thing I wanted to go over, but I want to pause. Any questions? Sophia, Angela, Jason, Will, you all have been pretty quiet. It's totally cool if you're eating your lunch. Any questions? Again, like Tina said, you may think it's very specific, but chances are somebody else is thinking the same question. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'll just start calling them out too. Will is never quiet, so I'm shocked. <laughs> I was gonna say, Thomas, you have your hand raised, so go ahead. Yeah, so I was just wondering, um, in particular for like spring internships, is that gonna, in terms of deadlines, is that gonna be something that we can acquire through um, reaching out to our specific rep or senator we're looking to intern for? Because yeah. in my previous research, I couldn't find it anywhere on their websites. No, that's okay. So you ask a really good question and I'm glad you raised it. Typically, House, ten, House and Senate tend to um, look for applicants the semester ahead of whenever they need it. So like now's the perfect time to look for spring internships. Um, they may not, some offices don't have set deadlines. The ones that do are usually in the leadership or the really, really popular people. Um, and that tends to be earlier. So like September, October for some of the leadership positions. Um, but other members, it's like, they have it open until it's filled. Like I've definitely gotten emails and calls in like January, even February from like some lonely congressperson who's like, I just need a smart student to come work for me. I don't care if they don't know anything about my district. Like nobody applied or, you know, especially as we kind of go, we're still in this hybrid mode. I think staffing is, is going to be a little tricky. So I would say if you're interested and they have an email that you can send your information to, or they have an application process, go ahead and apply now for the spring. And then in your cover letter, just make it clear that you're looking for opportunities for the spring. And then that helps them. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. So, um, all right, Will, you ask a good question too. How difficult is balancing classes, et cetera, with spring internships? Again, this is where it depends on the office. You know, like I have heard that, you know, AOC, because she, um, you know, really makes like workers' rights and having um, access to Congress a really important thing. One, I've heard she pays pretty well. And two, I've heard that she gives significant real experience for her interns. Now, this is just what I what I hear. So I would say like, you know, you work for someone like that, that's going to give you substantive work. It could be, it could be more of an issue challenging than with someone who like, you know, 
yeah, you can answer your phones and emails, but it's like brain power wise, it's not like the hardest internship. It's also going to depend on if your Congress people are going to be in person next semester or not as well. By and large, and I'm not making a political statement, this is just the way it is, Republicans are in person, Democrats are still working virtually. And now there are some exceptions on both sides, but you know, students I've met who are going to the Hill right now are working for Republican members of Congress. So depending on who you're looking at, that might also be a factor if you're working remotely and you can do different hours, um, you know, you might be able to balance it better. Um, but the, and the last thing I'll say is usually most offices during the fall and the spring semester, they're not expecting a 40 hour work week. They know you're in class. Usually a lot of your fellow interns are gonna be folks from American and GW and Maryland and you know the DC area schools. Um, but exactly what the expectations will be are going to depend on the member of Congress. And that's where, when you're looking on their website, read very carefully, because a lot of them will often say like, you know, the expectation is 10 to 20 hours or the expectation is you're here every Friday. You know, so as you're looking at what classes you might take next semester, you know, just keep that in mind. I've known students who, you know, condense their classes to like two days a week. So like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're able to, whether it's the Hill or another internship, able to be in person, but that's where yeah, there's 435 members of Congress. There's going to be 435 different sets of expectations for how often you work. Are you coming in person? Um, you know, what type of work that you're going to be doing. So that's where the you really have to just do your research. But that's a good question. A lot of students do balance it. You know, there's the shuttle that goes to the law center, which is not far from Capitol Hill, or you can just hop across to Roslyn and take the blue, orange, or silver line train to Cap South. It's pretty easy. I've done it myself many times. All right, now one last thing I did wanna bring up is um, just touch on it briefly. In addition to working for members of Congress, there are some agencies that are technically considered part of the legislative branch that are some really cool opportunities. One is the Library of Congress, um, and it, no, you don't have to be a librarian or studying library sciences to be able to work at the Library of Congress. They also have a lot of really cool research opportunities as well, and a lot of these agencies that I'm going to talk about are research heavy, so if you really like research and writing and doing more of what you're doing in school and your, in your internship. The other um, agency is Congressional Research Service. Now, Congressional Research Service kind of serves as like a think tank slash consulting firm for members of Congress. So if a new issue is coming before a congressperson, you know, they often don't know all the minutia of like all these issues. So what do they do? They go task Congressional Research Service to research an issue for them and give them a report. And so you have a lot of folks working over there who have PhDs and who are very academic. Um, I've worked with folks over there myself, they are some of the most brilliant minds on some of these issues. And it's everything you might think about, tax reform, cybersecurity, foreign affairs, dealings with China, dealings with Russia, like anything that you might be interested in studying or might be working on at one of the other agencies, there's experts in Congressional Research Service that do the same work. Thank you for putting the opportunities in there. And they have a really good employment bulletin if you wanna sign up for their employment opportunities as well. The only thing is that you're very much working in the shadows. They don't really publish their work. It's for members of Congress only sometimes, um, but you, it's, it's really, really cool work that they do. So if you're really interested in that hardcore research side. The last agency um, is the Government Accountability Office, and they were actually founded by Congress to be an oversight branch for, or an oversight agency for the rest of the federal government. So they oftentimes, if an agency is in the news because they've done something bad or they've wasted money or somebody's breaking a law, um, knowingly or unknowingly, it's because they've been written up in a GAO report. Um, I have had a lot of experience working with my former job, like almost everybody who were my bosses in the research area were former GAO folks. And they, um, they do like, if you just really love getting into policy, 
and like why policy is the way it is and how it's being enacted and and what are the pitfalls if you know looking at like the infrastructure plan like what does it take to get from the infrastructure plan being passed into law to actually rolling it out and how are agencies using everything within their power to make the law happen um GAO really discovers that they do I'm going to pull up their website real quick um they'd be honestly if I were to go work for a government agency they'd be on my list the top of my list for agencies to work for they are right now linked as number one best agency to work for in the mid-size agency rankings um, but you can see they do reports and testimonies. You can look at their topics that they discover. And so these are like things that they're looking at right now. Cybersecurity, coronavirus oversight, uh, the presidential transition, race, the, our fiscal future, cost savings, science and technology. They also have this thing called the high risk list. And the high risk list is like this list of areas where like, if we're not careful, stuff can hit the fan and like, it would be really bad. Um, so you can see here, like some of the new ones are small loans for businesses as a result of COVID, um, the drug um, opioid crisis, um, the postal service and what's going on there, our census, cybersecurity, human capital management, that basically means like the government can't get the talent they need to work for it, and that's a problem. Um, so this agency has a lot of really cool opportunities. Um, yes, and they they hire interns regularly. In fact, I believe um, they might be table. They might be doing. I have to check Handshake, but um, they typically do at least like tables or office hours on Handshake from time to time. So if you just go to the events tab on Handshake and type in GAO, or sometimes Catholic really CRS, Congressional Research Services, not to be confused with Catholic Relief Services, also a great group. Um, the, but they often do do look for folks on campus. And so, yeah, if you are interested in like doing research for a think tank, like researching for GAO is really awesome. And you learn, like I said, I, I learned my craft of research from a number of GAOers and you learn way more about policies than you ever thought you would before. Um, yeah, it's unpaid. Their internships aren't paid, unfortunately, but it's a really awesome opportunity. So any questions? Thank you for those of you who've been able to stay on through the end. Any questions for me, Tina? I didn't have a chance to introduce Elizabeth, who is also working at the School of Foreign Service Graduate Career Center. And she's gonna be helping out for undergrads also interested in areas of public service. Hi, everybody. All right. Well, as always, y'all have the three of us here to serve you and many other people, if you haven't already signed up, sign up for GU Politics Listserv because they are awesome at getting some of these folks who do this work on a regular basis on campus for different events. Their fellows, like the fellows are amazing and a really untapped resource, like going to some of their fellows office hours or coffee chats um, in the basement of Healy. They do some incredible work and we'll sometimes work with them on career programming as well. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, like I said, now it's just starting up to be the season for applying for next semester. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Tina, Elizabeth, anything? Any major omissions that you want to make sure I would be talking about? No, I think we, we hit everything. We did the signups for things. Um, join us next week uh, for the next one. We still have more of these to go. Um, actually, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't even know which one we're doing next week. But <laughs> might be multinationals or em embassies. One of the two. One of the two. It's me. I know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely join us next week for more information. Of course, the rest of these, um, the we have recorded this one and some others, and so I will put the link to the past recordings if you've missed any, um, so you can take, check those out as well. Yep. All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming today. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And yeah, take care. Bye.